Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Strike Zone with St. Paul Saints manager George Samus. Strike Zone is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the St. Paul manager questions about the Saints, baseball, or sports in general, or just seek the skipper's wisdom about life events that may be going on out there. This week, the skipper talks to us about the recent re-signing of star outfielder Willie Argo. He shares with us his insights about the NFL and talks to us about the excitement of how well the Vikings have been playing. Plus, he answers some additional questions related to the NFL, Vinny DeFazio, and Major League Baseball. So let's get right to Strike Zone. So let us welcome back manager George Samus this week. George, let's first of all begin with team updates you have for us. Yeah, well, we um, we just signed Willie Argo back, and um, you know we're glad to have him back. He he's just a he's a solid player, and he had a good year for us. And um, and you saw a bunch of the games too, and you saw he's he's something that doesn't show up in the box score. He's he's a real good outfitter out there. He he made some some real nice plays out there, and um, you know, and you can put him anywhere you want in the outfit, left, center, right, and you know he'll be good out there. So. Um, you know we're happy to have him back, and and I I think he can get um I think he can be he can get a little bit better too. I I think he'll improve, and I just think he has he has upside, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was um you know, one of the top players in the league, and it wouldn't surprise me if he stole thirty five forty bags. It wouldn't surprise me if he hit fifteen twenty home runs. It just he's just a he's just a good player that can do a lot of things. I think you've talked on the show before about how he was actually close to getting back to affiliate ball, but a, an injury had kind of um, diminished that chance at the moment. But I'm sure he'll get another one shot if he plays like last season. Yeah, he um, so he got up to that good start. The first half he was good, and and I do remember we were on the way to Sioux City, and he had a little groin injury, and the Yankees called me when we were on the bus. Um, so it's just um. We did happen to stop at a McDonald's, you know, because I had to eat. You know, I really enjoyed the McDonald's breakfast, and I did talk to the Yankees guy, and um, and they wanted just, you know, they wanted to wait just to see till he got back. Um, so a week later, he got back, but I don't know if they moved on and found somebody else. But it's it's just too bad because the timing, you know, didn't work out because they were interested. They did want to take him to Double A, but again, it's just sometimes you get a bad break and. The groin injury, I guess, you know, yeah, did that, and it's just too bad that he didn't get the opportunity because at that time, you know, he deserved it. Well, hopefully, you'll get another shot with that. So let us head with our fan questions this week. We first of all begin with two from Jeff. The first one asks: Now that you have had a year to play in the ballpark, how will the dimensions of CHS Field impact your roster selections? It seems to me that pull hitters might be of more value as right and left field seem more conducive, conducive to home runs. There seems to be much more room in center field than the power alleys for well-hit fly balls to become load out, or loud outs. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's very accurate. It's it's pretty big out there in center field, and um, you, you know, defensively, you better have a fast outfield out there. You know, they can run down those balls, and um, we saw last season we had the three outfitters we had was so good defensively. They covered a lot of ground out there and made some nice plays. And um, you know, offensively, it's you know I think it's it's good to you know maybe get a couple extra left-handed bats. Um, I know Sanka was great in the park. Um, yeah, it's just kind of park that you know that short down porch in right field. And but I think you know if we can get a maybe a couple extra left-handed hitters, I think that would play well in our park. I wondered if you think that the defense will actually get a little bit better this season now that people have seen how to how to play off that right field wall in particular. Uh, that seemed to be kind of a little tricky early on, but with a year under their belt, I would figure guys would be a little more, um, you know, knowledgeable about how balls are going to hit off that at this point. Yeah, it's just getting used to it, and um, you know, and obviously, you know, we're. You know, Klaus Nicker, you know, he will not be returning, um, so we are looking for a right fielder. Um, so we'll see how it plays out, and you know, whoever is, whoever is the right fielder, we will you know, hopefully they get used to it quick. And um, but you know, again, the outfitters we had last year, it was nice to have them. They were they could run, they could throw, and it's it, and they saved you know they saved a lot of pitcher runs with you know running down those balls out there, and it just it's just good to have good solid outfitters. 
Our next question from Jeff is, Vinny DeFazio was re-signed by the Saints. Great news for the Saints, but he questions why Vinny hasn't been signed by a major league organization. He'd like to know your thoughts as to why Vinny hasn't been signed by a club. Is it possibly because of his defense or his age? Um, you know, he's um, he swung the bat so well for us, and it was, it was great to have. And maybe if he can come in and, and put in another good year, you know, the way he had this year. Yeah, and he's a good catcher. He receives well, blocks the ball as well. Pitchers like throwing to him. He calls a good game. Yeah, he doesn't have the strongest arm, and I'm guessing that's the maybe that's what the holdup would be. Um, you know, but if he can just come in and just keep swinging the bat the way he did last year, you know, you would think somebody would give him a chance eventually. Um, you know, it's just he's he's a great guy to have too, and um, you know. It's too bad that he hasn't got the shot yet, and he still may. You know, it's a long off season, and um, but again, I just think that's the only holdup is, and even he'll admit it too. He he doesn't have the greatest arm, and I think that's what would maybe turn some people away. Well, I think he proved last year. He came in kind of battling to be for playing time by the way that you had set up the catching situation, and then winds up being MVP. So um, maybe his best baseball is just right ahead of him now. So. Absolutely, and I hope so because he's a great guy to have, and you know, and you know, one of the fan favorites, and it's just he's a good guy to have. Kevin from St. Paul would like to know: with Vinny DeFazio resigning, do you see him batting third again next season? Yeah, you know, it, it could happen that way. I, I'm just not really sure. It just depends whatever else we have around. But I, I'd be very comfortable with him hitting third, him hitting fourth. Um, you know, at this point, I just can't say because we just don't know. You know how the rest of that lineup's gonna, you know, take place. Clem from Bloomington would like to know who do you think would be the perfect person for the Twins to add to their team as a free agent? Um, I really haven't really followed that too much. Um, you know, if they can get maybe, you know, maybe a good starting pitcher, but you know, it's you know, with the money these guys are asking for these days, you, you just don't know. You know, it's just. I mean, I. Read yesterday that Quato, what he turned down, twenty million a year, and it's just like, yeah. you know, <laughs> didn't the Mets and the Royals prove that you really don't need to go spend all that money on those big time guys? Just, just get some good, solid, young, hungry guys, and just go after it that way. It is amazing. I, I think he wanted forty million more in the contract or something, and I thought, wow, that's. I guess if you can get it, you know. What can yeah, you but you know. It's, Really amazing, but I, I just why would why do teams fall for it? You know, and maybe you're going to see some teams back away from it. You know, um, and again, the Mets and the Royals who are in the World Series proved you don't need to go get those kind of players and just have a bunch of good, solid young players that play the game hard. And um, you know, it's just um, it's just a lot of it's just a lot of money to turn down. You know, it's interesting, too, because if you look at Kansas City, this isn't a team that you look at and say, okay, well, they won a World Series, and but in a year or two, they'll be they'll be easily down again. I mean, that's a team built for the long haul. Absolutely. Yeah, they're a good team, good, solid team. And, um, you know, and it's even guys like Ben Zobris, I think he's an excellent player to have. And um, I know he's a free agent now, but get him. He is just a solid player, and you need guys like that. You know, and I don't think he was making fifteen million a year. I think he was, what was it, four or five million? You know, he's just a, a good, solid player, and it'd be nice to have a bunch of guys like that. James from Hopkins would like to know what is it like in the minor leagues traveling around on the bus mostly? Are stadiums good? What are the hotels like? He's curious to know what life in the, as a minor leaguer is like. You know, when we have our trips, I mean, we go to Fargo, it's four hours. We go to Sioux Falls, it's four hours, and. and you know, some of the chips are fine, but those long ones, you know, it, it gets tough at times. And, you know, especially when you leave after a game at night and you pull in at 6, 7, 8 in the morning and then you got to play that night. It, it is tough at times and it's obviously tougher on the players. Um, it's, um, and that 14-day road trip that we have coming up here the first month of the season, it's, that is going to be a tough trip. And, it's, again, in, in on that trip, you play the first 28 days of the season. The 14-day trip is no off days, and the travel is it's pretty far from city to city where we're going. So, I mean, that's honestly just going to be a tough, brutal trip, and just got to get through it. And it's early in the year, and um, 
but we do have direct TV on the bus, which that does help. Because still, I watch so many movies. I mean, I love Caddyshack, and I've seen it so many times. <laughs> um, you can watch so many movies, but having that direct TV on the bus, that does help. Um, if some of the other stadiums are nice. Winnipeg Stadium's beautiful. Gary's is beautiful. Lincoln's and Kansas City's are some beautiful stadiums. Um, and the hotels, too. Some are good. You know, some aren't so good. And um, So it's just... Um, Life in the minor leagues, it's obviously we, we love doing, you know, what we're doing, but there's times the travel can be tough and, you know, that's why every off day you get, you try to, you try to enjoy it as much as you can and because you don't get too many of them. Do you think that it's easier for you now than it was when you were a player? Um, you know, no, because I'm getting old now, so, <laughs> um, no, it's um, it's you know, it's 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 tough now. It's when you're younger, you recover easier. But and again, I'm not the one playing, so I think the players, you know, they're in their twenties, and it's, even they have tough days too. I mean, you have those long trips at times too. Getting at seven, eight in the morning, maybe it's best you don't take batting practice that day and just have them show up an hour and a half for the game and just go about it that way. Cindy from Chaska would like to know, how do you expect the Patriots to respond to their first loss? I think they will respond, and it was just that's an exciting game, and um, yeah, it's too bad that they couldn't pull it out, and obviously they had the lead and, and blew it, but I think they'll be fine. The quarterback's outstanding, the coach is outstanding, so I think, I think they'll be fine. Chuck from Detroit Lakes would like to know, do you think all these injuries will make it so the Patriots simply can't compete like they were before? You know what, they've lost them. A lot of key guys, but you know what? They, they're the Patriots. Most everybody hates them, and they find ways to get it done, and I think they'll get it done again. They'll, they'll find a way to get it done. Patrick from Minneapolis asks, Skipper, isn't it great that all those young stud quarterbacks everyone has been talking about the last few years, Luck, Griffin, Manziel, Kaepernick, um, it is great, isn't it? But it is Teddy Bridgewater outperforming them all. Yeah, you know what? It's a, it's he's just a good player. He's yeah, he's um he's been impressive and just think he's gonna be the quarterback there for a long time and and he has a obviously a great running back behind him, um a, a real good defense, good coach. Um if he can just you know, cut down you know, the interceptions, keep the interceptions low, they're gonna be in a lot of games and, and they can go far in the playoffs too, so it's he he's he's a guy that I'm sure the fans you know Viking fans are comfortable having him as a quarterback, and I think he's I think he's going to have a real nice career. I think so too. He looks really sharp. I don't. Um, I can't think of who it was I was watching on Sports Center a couple of weeks ago that was comparing him to a young Joe Montana. I thought, well, that's yeah. that's serious praise right there. So yeah, that's yeah, that's a that's a good one. But you know, it's a long way to go before before that happens. But you know, he's he's a solid player. Thomas from Plymouth points out, aren't the Vikings' defense looking incredible? This is a Super Bowl-quality defense for sure. I tell you what, they do look real good, and I know they have another tough one coming up this week. I know Seattle, you know, they're struggling some and have up and down this year, but you know what, they're they're good, and it's going to be a tough matchup this week. And and I guess if Seattle misses the playoffs in the way the way that they've been playing, I guess we won't be surprised. But you know what? If they find a way to get into the playoffs and win the Super Bowl, I don't think we'll be surprised about that either. They're just, they have some good players there. Um, and that was a wild one they had the other day over the Steelers. But um, the, it's, a, it's a nice, good matchup here for the Vikings this week. And, you know, and I know the last time the Packers came in you know, a couple of weeks ago and just didn't get it done. Well, hopefully against this good team, the Vikings can get it done. Speaking of that, do you think the Vikings need to make sure they have at least two games that they are at least two games ahead of the Packers, so as not to worry about the last game against them? It seems to me the Vikings can't get aren't able to beat the Packers. This is Manny from Egan. Well, you just got to go out there and just take it game by game, and just yeah, if they had a two game lead going into the last game, that'd be nice. But I don't think you can think that way. You just go out there and you worry about Seattle this week, and um, and if they do you have a one-game lead going into that last game or tie going in that last game? It'll be exciting, but um, you know, just go out there and just you know, worry about the team you're playing that week. 
uh, Derek from Blaine would like to know, do you think Cam Newton is the MVP now? Um, he's been pretty good. I still think Brady is, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, Cam Newton. They look so good, too. You know, they um, – I thought Dallas actually had a chance against them, too, and that game was over real early. And um, Cam Newton's been – he's been good. He's he, I know he doesn't throw for 300 yards a game, but he's – He's made some nice throws, some tough throws, and obviously he's threat to run, and he's always um, – he just seems to get it done. And But that defense he has is, is something else, and um, you know, they they look pretty good. And, yes, yeah, if, if he was named MVP, it, it wouldn't be a surprise. Charlotte from Minneapolis asks of you, isn't it sad that such a great player like Kobe Bryant is going to end his career with such a terrible team? Yeah, it's. I mean, I really don't really follow the NBA much. I did, you know, hear the other day that he was retiring at the end of the year, and um, yeah, I don't even know what their record is. I know the Warriors have won every game, so <laughs> you hear that. But yeah, yeah Kobe Bryant, you know, again, and I really don't follow the NBA much or basketball much, but I just remember him making all those clutch big shots over and over and over, and he was he's a great player for a long time. It's amazing how the Lakers have fallen. I mean, that's. Uh, I think since. You and I are right around the same age, so we've watched the Lakers just be the, the franchise of the league for 40 years or something. It's kind of stunning. So. Absolutely, there was something. He, he's been, um, you know, he's he's been something else. And him and LeBron and Michael Jordan and Larry Bird have been probably the best guys that I've seen play, you know, in my lifetime. And um. My favorite player of all time, I mean, Dr. J was, growing up, he was my favorite guy, though. I just loved watching that play, and, um, you know, so, but Kobe's been, you know, he's been one of the, one of the greats. I agree with you about Dr. J, class-looking guy, too, you know, just everything about him awesome. I had like, so. The, the finger rolls, the dung, he was just, that was my guy growing up. I just loved watching him, and just exciting, and. You know, with those with those dunks, and he's like all started it all back then. And him and Dominic Wilkins, it was just it was fun to watch them play. But Dr. J was was my guy. Absolutely, Lewis from New Brighton would like to know uh, what is your top five power ranking for the NFL. Okay. Well, first, I still think the Patriots are the best. I, you know, even though the Panthers are undefeated, it's close. But I think the Patriots are number one. I think the Panthers are right there at number two. But obviously, they can be number one. Um, Arizona, you know, they um they're so good. Yeah, you know, they're um it's gonna come down to the end with them too. Um I would have to say they're number three with the Broncos by number four after that big win and and number five you can put a bunch of teams, but I'm gonna put the Vikings at number five and just um hopefully it stays it stays that way or they even move up a little bit with a big win this week. But um and you know a team that I or a couple of teams that wouldn't be in the top five, but I think can do a lot of damage if they can get to the playoffs. You know, that obviously Seattle's, which I'm not a fan of. You know, they can get it done if they get in. You won't be surprised what they do, and the Steelers as well too. It's just that offense, and that's an impressive offense. And if they can get in, you think they can go in and beat anybody? So, um, so those are the top five. But those two is really just just the wild card teams that could. And do some damage. Our last question is: I hear everyone discuss who is an elite quarterback. I get Brady and Rogers. Manning and Breeze seem to not be elite anymore. Do you think of anyone else that's an elite quarterback? Yeah, you know what? I I, I think Roethlisberger is is one outstanding quarterback. Would take him any day. Um, you know, he makes some great plays, and you know. Avoids getting sacked, bounces out of it, and makes great plays. I know he has great receivers, and um, I think he's outstanding. And um, and you know what? This year, Carson Palmer, he's what a beautiful ball he throws. He has been great, and um, so I so I think those two are those two this year are just they just get it done and we'll take him any day. But Roethlisberger is the guy that I I, I really like him, and he's been. He's been as good as anybody this year, so just um, he said it'd be nice to see them get into the playoffs and, and see what they can do. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us this week, George. Okay, thank you very much. See you later. Okay. All right. See you next week. We want to thank Manager George Samus for joining us on Strike Zone this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the St. Saint Paul Saint Skipper, 
please send them to us at AskGeorge at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. That's AskGeorge at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. Please have your questions to us by Sunday evening so we can give the skipper a little time to review those questions before we record the show Monday afternoon. I want to thank you for joining us this week. I'm Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Strike Zone.